Hey guys, today is a big day. As you can see, the battle wagon is behind me. The old wrap is removed. I've got a bit more adhesive and residue to clean up, get it cleaned up and prepped and ready for the new wrap from Barrett Hepburn Designs. It's a fully custom wrap and it's printed on matte chrome vinyl. This is next level. I'm telling you guys, uh, it's gonna look insane. So I'm super excited. I can't wait to slap it on. It's gonna be a big job. It's gonna take a lot of time. So we're gonna time lapse the whole procedure so you guys can see it. I did some shots before I pulled the old wrap and all that stuff. So we'll put together a cool little video to let you see how a custom wrap can transform your machine and just take it to the next level. So if you've got a crazy custom machine that you've been working on for a long time or you put a lot of thought into and you wanna take it that next level and really make it unique, then make sure you consider a quality custom designed wrap. And I don't mean those cookie cutter wraps you can just, anyone can buy online. I mean, reach out to a designer, get a custom wrap made. If you've dropped 20, 30 grand on your machine, which isn't in, like these days, that's easy to do, then why would you hold out for that two grand-ish, depending on what you're doing, that will really just escalate that to the next, next level. Um, you guys are gonna see what that's gonna look like once the new wrap is on. So watch, let's, wor let's work some magic. I'll give you a quick little teaser. <laughs> see, I told you it looks awesome. So stay tuned, you'll see the whole process. We'll time lapse, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be really cool. And make sure you check out the other content. Wait till we put this wrap to the test. Barrett told me that it can take anything I throw at it and that it's also gonna add structural rigidity to the chassis because of how high quality it is. So we'll see. Essentially, I'm thinking I should just be able to hit anything I want and it should bounce right off me. And this new cage, uh, that's, not, that's not gonna hurt. The new cage will definitely help. Look at that. Wait till you see that red pop with the chrome wrap on it. <laughs> Man, we're gonna need sunglasses during the day in the summertime to look at this thing. All right, the next stage of the build is an exciting one and a big step. We're gonna peel this old wrap off and we're gonna get it ready for the new wrap I'm putting on it. This wrap's been on for about four, four and a half years. It's held up awesome and um, I can't say anything bad about it. Uh, the new wrap is gonna take things to the next level though, so just wait and see. And uh, since it is a good quality material, everything's really nice uh, from day one, I think this wrap should come off pretty good. Hopefully it doesn't leave too much of the adhesive behind. That's usually the worst part, trying to get that adhesive off. But um, if you stick to quality products, like quality materials, when you're buying wraps and stuff like that, and you spend an extra few dollars for the better material, um, you'll be really happy when it comes time to take it off. You can see it's coming off real nice. And it's taken about 99, 98, 99% of the adhesive with it on this piece. These wraps are really tough and they actually do a great job protecting the machine underneath. Now let's do the door. Oh man, this is crazy. Goodbye. I'm keeping this thing for sure. Wow, look at that come off. That's real nice. If you were to apply a wrap like this to a brand new machine and then peeled it off right before you sold it a few years later, it would look pretty much brand new. I rolled the razor in West Virginia recently and it landed on this side. Ah! 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 Smile for the camera. Yes. Yes. Good. Oh. Holy Three, two, one. Got Going over. All right. Gentle, She's beautiful. Good. And that's like the only thing that managed to break through this wrap. So you can tell where it kind of cut its way through it. Wow, this is coming off really good. I'm really happy. And that piece of technology has gone a long, long way over the years. That's one thing you gotta remember. Adhesives these days are amazing. And like, they're so stinky and strong, yet removable. I mean, you get the best of both worlds. You never used to get that in days gone by. Back then, back then things were made to last, including adhesives, forever. <laughs> whether you wanted them to or not. As I mentioned before, you don't want to cheap out on material quality. The way this is coming off is all based on the fact that it was a good quality material. Wow, that is strong. But it's coming off clean. Wow. 
When you're peeling a wrap or any sticker, you want to maintain the largest surface area to pull on as possible. You don't want to rip it off in small pieces. As you can see, I'm, I'm pulling it off in one big sheet. <sighs> that stick stuck and it's sticky. I can stick that back on there. For the most part, if it wasn't dirty in some spots. That's awesome. Holy cow, this thing's gonna look different. <laughs> Might look pretty cool actually. With thinner, lower quality adhesive materials, what you'll notice is you can't get these long, big pieces off. It'll start to tear on you, and when you pull on it, it'll stretch and it'll break, and then you'll basically be left with like hundreds and hundreds of small stickers to peel off, versus these big panels coming off in nice, large sections. A cheap adhesive will also leave a lot more residue on the surface you're removing it from, which turns into a huge nightmare later to clean. This stuff's coming off real nice. Sometimes you'll hear things like clean removal adhesives or an adhesive that doesn't leave residue. In reality, any adhesive will leave some residue behind. Clean removal basically means about 80% of it comes off with the sticker, not 100%. Also, the manufacturer only guarantees clean removal for a matter of time, usually it's between 2 and 5 years, but the conditions you use the machine in and where it sits, if it's in direct sunlight and heat, it all affects the materials and the adhesives. So there's no express warranties on the fact that it's it's not going to cause damage coming off. This is a great example of what to expect though. Wow, that looks different. Just look at that transformation from one side to the other. What a drastic change. Just wait until the new wrap goes on. It's even going to be crazier. Okay, so here we got the driver's side. Wrap all on. What a difference that wrap makes. A completely different vehicle. Got the heater cooking and warming the place up and um, we're gonna start getting it all prepped up to put the new wrap on. The first step, like with any kind of like finish work, like paint work, body work, prep is the most important part. So we're gonna wipe down the whole machine with a citrus base cleaner, just any really good adhesive remover. And then you have to wa wipe it down with something else. Like if you want to and you have some time and it's nice out and it's nice weather, then the best thing to do would be to give it a nice wash with like a, like a high quality soap degreaser to get anything off the surface and then apply your wrap when it's completely dry. I'm just gonna use some pre-paint prep. Uh, it's called Aquascat. It's just like a, a water-based um, degreaser and uh, you use it for uh, pre-paint wipe down. It works really good. So as you can see, there was some dirt and stuff trapped under the old wrap in some of the corners where after time I had lifted a bit. You can't really see it with the wrap on. The wrap held up great. I still got a few little patches to pull off here, uh, but that's just a few minutes now. And then I don't know if you can see it on the video here, but there's some sections here where the adhesive has stayed on. But generally speaking, the wrap removed really nice. There's only certain areas with adhesive. I'll clean most of it off. If I miss a couple little spots, the new wrap is pretty thick and heavy duty too. So it shouldn't show through at all. The machine's a little beat up, but I don't really care if there's some dents and stuff like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix up a few of these rivets in the door so that they're nice and tight like new again. Once it's wiped down, we'll get the new wrap on there. It's gonna be a big job. It's gonna be really rewarding and fun though. Gonna watch it evolve. It's gonna be so cool. So I hope you enjoy the video, guys. Smash that like button, follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. You can also follow on TikTok. I don't really post too, too much on there. Um, I try to get on social media when I get a chance, but sometimes I put it on the back burner when I got too much other stuff going on. Big shout out to Barrett Hepburn Designs for hooking me up with this wicked wrap and designing it with me live. Uh, he was awesome to work with. He can take your thoughts and your dreams and, and basically turn them into a wicked wrap. I got you to work. I should have branded out like your logo and everything, but you know what it says, the team AJP and the whole like the Dreadful Injective Productions and that too. Yeah, let me send you one more thing. I just think it's pretty cool. I like ripping artwork out of like the file and that too, especially when you got like certain pieces that look good. I'm gonna rip that adrenaline junkie prod thing and send it to you, it just has like an image. Live designing the wrap with Barrett was a ton of fun. He's easy to work with, he's super creative, and you watch the wrap come to life before your eyes. He asks you questions, he gets your feedback, and he does exactly what you want. All right guys, here's the wrap from Barrett Hepburn Designs, all packaged up in this box here. It was printed in Alberta M7. I'm not taking this out yet, so 
you guys will be seeing it for the first time with me. I just kind of took a little peek in there and then I'm just like, oh my god, that's the same. <laughs> wow. That's gonna be wild. Oh man! Oh man, oh man! Isn't that crazy? That looks insane. Matte chrome. Wow, the detail in the print is crazy. Holy cow, so many pieces to figure out. Oh, that's the root, I think. Comes with kind of like a template of all the pieces. Man, this is wild. I cannot wait to get this on the machine. It's so silver and so shiny. It's gonna look insane. <laughs> I, uh, I can't wait to see. Uh, it's really gonna brighten up the machine. That's why I did the red cage and the red exo cage. I know it was a lot of red with the old wrap. That's why I was telling everyone the new wrap will not have that much red in it. Um, so I think this is gonna look really great. I'm blown away by like how cool this looks. <laughs> wow, look at all of that. Now we gotta figure out where it all goes. A lot of the panels are pretty straightforward and simple. They can only really go one place. And then as you kind of break it down and remove stuff, you'll kind of see what's missing and where you can put other things. There's some outlines here that are clearly visible where they go, obviously the doors and like the rear kind of fascia section there, like the, the, the panels next to the doors, like all that, it's very evident. Uh, obviously this is the roof. So like that's, that all makes a lot of sense. Looks like there was a few, um, this one says uh, it's extra. There's missing a line or something. and. Same there, so um, that's pretty cool. They've labeled them from M7 Design at the printer. It's just so I don't get confused and wrong, use the wrong one. Um, and if I wanna use that extra vinyl, that's cool. I can use it to cover something else up or yeah, or repair a spot that gets damaged. So, initial impressions, the quality is top notch and I can't wait to get it on. It's gonna look awesome. Enough talking, enough making video. I'm gonna get back to the shop, prep the razor so that I can get this bad boy on there. If you've got residue from an old wrap on your machine, it's really easy to clean off as long as you use a citrus-based cleaner. I've got this Goo Buster stuff I bought at Canadian Tire here in Canada. The key is citrus-based, guys. This stuff's really good. Rapid remover, this stuff works really well. Based on the smell and feel of the new stuff I got, it's pretty much the same formula probably. It's just a heavy-duty citrus cleaner. It cuts through these adhesives really well. Let it sit for three or four minutes and then just get a plastic covered scraper or blade and just go around and it won't scratch anything. Plus you're covering it with wrap anyway, so who cares? And as you can see, it literally just peels it off. It makes easy work of it. And then you can wipe off all those like residue clumps with uh, a rag. And since it's citrus based, it cleans everything up really nice all around it, even like dirt and, and things like that. And um, once you wipe it down, it's really clean, but it is a little oily. So you do have to do a, a final wash down. So in a best case scenario, if it's nice out, you would want to wash your machine with soap and water and rinse it off and let it dry really well, then do the wrap. Um, but you can also get away with just wiping all this off and then a wet rag, rinsing it off a few times and then going over it with like a pre-paint prep or something like that, a degreaser, just to make sure everything's nice and clean and off there. So I'm gonna go around and do the whole machine. I'm gonna put about an hour into this likely, but it'll end up being well worth it with the end result being better. And once I peel this wrap off, if I wanna replace it down the road, then uh, it'll come off easier. Remember guys, prep work is key. All right guys, let's slap this wrap on. Look at that, that looks sweet. So um, the wrap basically comes printed in a way that maximizes the amount of, or reduces the amount of waste during printing. So these different panels that are trimmed out here, that are cut out, they are gonna be just randomly placed on the sheets that you get, and then you need to kind of figure out where they go. Kind of like a puzzle. For the most part, they only fit in one place, and you should kind of have an idea of where they go. And they send you this, um, this breakdown here. And it kind of gives you an idea of like all the panels and, and how they look and their size and an idea of where they go. So you should be able to figure it out. So here's the hood piece. Look at that. That is sweet, eh? So uh, let's start by putting that on. Just take your time with this. 
You should have fun doing it. I've installed some wraps before. Oh, cool. So it is an air release vinyl. It's chrome with a matte over laminate. That's what makes it matte chrome. The clear over laminate layer is matte. Uh, you could make this glossy and it would be insane. So yeah, you can see, um, you can see that it's got that air release mesh in it. So that's nice, so that'll prevent like wrinkles and bubbles. So just be careful pulling it up because there's all sorts of uh, cuts. If this is anything like the other new vinyls, then you should be able to peel it and reapply it a few times if you can't line it up right. But just take your time. Find a good mark, spot to landmark and then get as straight as you can. I'm gonna show you guys these first few panels real time without cutting it, no edits, just so that you can get a good idea of how many times you need to pull this off and reposition it until you get it just right. Don't get frustrated, take your time, especially if it's your first time, and, and get a feel for the material. Yeah, it peels off really nice, so you can reposition it. Try to find the best spot to start laying it down here. Pay special attention to all the contour lines on the hood, the lower spots, the higher spots. When you push something into a lower spot, it'll pull vinyl with it and, and it can affect your fit. So you'll have to kind of factor all that in with your placement and, and factor in the fact that when you push into a groove, the edges will pull in. So it might throw your alignment off. You might have to peel it again and, and reposition it just you know, a quarter inch to one side and, and try it over and over again. Don't be scared to peel it and reposition it over and over again. You can peel this vinyl multiple times. It will not affect the adhesive. Um, the adhesive takes time to really cure on there. Once you apply pressure and push it on there and it sits for a day or two, that's when the bond really occurs. Keep in mind, make sure you have really, really clean hands when you do all of this. Do not contaminate the adhesive. Also. Pay attention to not contaminating the surface of the vehicle. Make sure there's no dust or debris out there. Make sure you have a, hand, a cloth handy so that if you do see something, you, you clean it off. Once something touches that adhesive like a foreign object, it's game over. You're, you're not getting it off there. And make sure the adhesive never contacts the adhesive if you're, if you're moving the panels or, or folding the pieces because you'll be in a world of hurt. You can reposition them, like I said, over and over and over again, as long as you maintain clean hands and a clean working surface. But once it's contaminated, uh, you're in for problems. If you're not patient, if you don't like doing projects like this, then I'm just telling you right now, this might not be the thing for you. It's worth spending the money and getting a professional to install it if this is gonna frustrate you because if you lose your composure here, you're gonna run into issues. If you plan on doing this install yourself, just the installation process on a prep machine can take you anywhere from about four to eight hours. Um, and it's really important that you start with a few key panels. I'm starting with the main hood panel here because as long as I get that aligned properly, I can use it as a guide for the rest of the panels around it. It's a focal point. So, so make sure you get that one on there good because with anything custom, a, a wrap or any machine, um, none of the wraps will be 100% perfect. They're all gonna require a little bit of fine tuning, a little bit of tweaking, maybe a trim here and there, maybe a relief cut. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, these aren't just, you know, it's not like a drag and drop thing where you pop it on there and it just falls into place. If you are gonna get a professional to install this, make sure they are actually a professional. Ask to see their portfolio and some of their previous work because if they mess up your $2,000 wrap, um, I mean, it's gonna come out of your pocket. They're gonna say sorry and they're gonna walk away from it. So make sure you're dealing with someone reputable. If you're in my area, in the Southern Ontario region, uh, then Barrett and I have discussed working out a deal. Contact Barrett, he can get you in touch with me. I will install your custom wrap on any side-by-side -side vehicle. I've got a lot of experience doing this stuff. Um, installing a wrap like this 
just for curiosity's sake, should cost you about $500 um, because of the amount of work involved in prepping the machine and the time involved. It's going to take a, literally an entire day from start to finish to do a machine like this. So if you want to drop your wrap off at my shop, um, we can figure out a time and a, and a fair price and I can install it for you. Uh, I love doing this stuff. I, I love puzzles. Uh, my OCD definitely helps me out with this stuff. All the contact info you need will be in the description of the video here and you can also check out the Adrenaline Junkie Prod website at www.adrenalinejunkieprod.com and um, you'll be able to contact me there or get information on how to contact Barrett as well. A great way to get in touch with Barrett is through his Facebook page. You can find him there and send him a message and he's really good at getting back pretty quick. With all that being said though, my goal with this video is to show you that installing this wrap is possible on your own as long as you just plan it out and take your time. It's not rocket science guys. Anyone can pull it off as long as you're patient and you, and you have an open mind and you're willing to learn how this material works um, and, and you know, just just be patient with it and the results will be well worth the time invested. Pay attention to the video, watch every step, watch how I apply the panels, where I apply pressure, how many times I have to pull it off and, and put it back on even though I've done this a bunch of times and, and you'll see um, it, it's totally doable. Keep in mind too that some vehicles are easier than others. I'm showing you a more extreme example here with my full exo cage, the overhood bars, the roll cage in place the way it is. Placing a lot of these panels is a lot more effort um, because you gotta, you, you know, you're gonna see me struggling around some of these sections in, in later on in the video. And, and if you didn't have this exo cage and if you didn't have the overhood bars, a lot of the panels I have difficulties with uh, will be very easy for you. Um, if you have a stock cage, then my biggest recommendation is unbolt it, lift it off, and then you really have an easy way of getting to everything. And like I said before, nothing is more important than having a clean canvas to work with. I just can't stress that enough. Clean hands, clean working surfaces, wash your hands every few minutes, make sure they're not greasy or oily. Sick. That took a while, didn't it? Uh, according to the video, I've been working on this for about eight and a f nine minutes. So this took me about five or six minutes to do, I guess. Um, and it went on well. It seems to be fitting quite well. The scale looks pretty good. Yeah, it's gonna look wicked. Having the gunmetal and black as my undertones also helps. We factor that in when we chose the colors so that even the parts that aren't covered will still flow well with the color pattern. So like you saw, just take your time. Take your time, especially on these highly visible panels. Work your fingers through all the creases, let the vinyl fall naturally. You saw how I laid it from the middle out the side, put my finger through the contour here, worked it up the side, then laid it over, then worked it all out. And then you can work your air out to all the sides because that's what those channels are for. They let you push that air out and it lets this um, vinyl lay really nice and flow well with all the contours. It's actually really impressive how a thick vinyl like this can conform as well as this does. Um, this has all evolved over the last few years. Uh, this wasn't always like this. What these wraps have become is insane. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. Look at that. That is awesome. Looks wicked. Heck, just that one panel on the machine makes it look different. Next piece goes here on the side. So this is all one piece, which to me looks like a real pain in the butt. Um, and it requires you to lift the cage off. And for me right now being alone, that's a real pain in the butt. So I kind of looked at it if I can open this up, then I don't need to lift the cage off. There's a nice natural contour here I can follow and make a cut. That won't be too ugly um, on the outside or visible there. So I just, like I said, I gotta pick a spot where I can make a nice clean cut. I could also actually make a cut here, which might be better. So you got a bunch of wiring there too. So. There's gonna be some trimming involved for the uh, wrap around here for sure because I modified the plastic back there to fit more wiring. As you can see, there's a little notch from the factory 
here for that, but mine's bigger. So maybe um, I'm actually gonna cut it here. That's a less visible spot. It kind of falls under the windshield. Don't be scared to change things up. These wraps are really good, but every machine is a little different, especially if you've modified them. So I'm gonna try and, and run a cut right down here. Yeah, like that. There we go, that'll work. Now I've turned this one big piece into two manageable pieces. That's gonna be the worst part, this here. We'll try and get that on first, and then we'll line this up. Okay, so we'll get this on, which is one of the harder ones. And then um, essentially I'll time-lapse the rest of the video. I don't need to walk you guys through this. Just take your time, lay it out. See, I like to cut them out like this off the big sheets. And um, then I can just kind of lay them out and eye it out before I do anything. It makes it easier for me. So I will start off by doing this big one. This is a big one for sure. Here. Ooh, are they expecting me to go over? Every time I get ready to apply a big piece like this, you'll see me walk around and kind of assess the situation, see where the best place to start is so that the vinyl falls naturally. Because if you go out of line at the beginning of it, it'll pull the whole panel out of whack. That's why I, I told you guys earlier to, to make sure you use some good landmarking so that you, you got some straight edges to, to line up against and set your gaps and stuff like that. And then what I like to do too is once I lay one panel like this, if there's a mirrored panel for the other side, I usually go and do it right away because it's fresh in my head and then that way I can, I can just clone what I did on the other side. Nice to find a, a straight edge and then use that as your guide to lay these bigger pieces down as best you can. So based on my body language, you're probably going to be able to see that I'm kind of trying to figure out if this piece um, goes underneath the grill there and, and I am noticing that it does. Um, so sometimes you will have to remove some of the trim pieces so that you can get things under there properly. Um, and don't fight trim pieces. If it takes you two or three minutes to pull it off, it's a lot easier to pull it off than to, to put things on crooked or, or, or mess your, your vinyl up um, or spend 20 minutes instead of three doing it. Okay, so it looks like I gotta unbolt the front clip. That sucks. Might be able to just get that piece off. Generally speaking, it's always easier to remove or loosen things rather than to fight them. So I'm just going around here and loosening all the grill bolts so I can slide it out of the way and get myself some working space. There we go. Just gotta wipe it. It's dirty under there. Me having this exo cage and overhood bars and everything definitely makes this a little harder. You might be noticing that the Team AJP falls right on a contour line there and a bend. Um, that was a little messed up by, by Barrett and I, but the cool thing is he had no problem sending me a new panel. He said that no matter what you do, sometimes with text and graphics it's hard to, to envision how things are going to lay on the machine. So if there's any issues, if something's misprinted, if something's crooked, all you got to do is reach out to him. He'll work with you on a solution and, and, and he can just send you the replacement pieces you need. Sorry, I know this shot's a little harder to see. I kind of messed up my camera angle on this one. I, I should have paid attention and moved it, but trying to do all this and film it and document it, it just adds so many extra steps along the way. It's easy to um, it's easy to miss one here and there. You can see me battling the overhood bar here. It was a real pain in the butt. Um, all these extra tubes made for, for a lot more work, and, and it's hard because the adhesive tries to stick to the bar, and then it gets sucked, and you got to peel it off. It's It's just a pain in the butt. Once that main part of the panel is in place at the front there, you can see the rest of it kind of just naturally falls into place. You just got to line it up with the straight edges there. And there you see me finishing it off. How long did that one take? Oh man, that was a solid 10 minutes. 
after that piece. So um, it's not a quick process, but it's going on pretty good. Yeah, it's badass. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Next, let's get this piece on there. So this one lays right in there and shouldn't be too hard. Especially not now that um, <laughs> we've turned it into two pieces. Doing that one piece would have been a nightmare. Um, if you had no bumpers or the cage off, then you could easily do it with the cage off. I mean, putting this wrap on with the cage off would be the best way to do it, but yeah, we're not playing that game. Gonna line up where I made the cut. It's a really good reference point, actually. I find corners and the long straight edges are, are great reference points, but you'll see what works best for you. Good, that's lined up real nice. One big valuable tip is do not apply pressure to any section of the adhesive or the panel until you're sure of the placement. You can see me anchoring the edges here with my thumb. You wanna find a good anchor spot so you can pull on the vinyl. There is a little bit of stretch to it. And, and that way, once it's anchored in one good spot, you can line up the rest of the panel like you see me doing here. And um, don't press down anywhere else until you're sure because that way it makes lifting and repositioning easier. You can see me moving some panels out of the way again. Remember, reposition those panels. Certain sections of the vinyl will, will flow underneath those panels. Um, so having them easy to move out of the way will help with positioning all of that so that everything lines up properly. The vinyl pieces themselves shouldn't really overlap on top of any of the other vinyl layers. Um, they're all cut to fit. Uh, there will be some gapping in certain sections though and there might be a little bit of overlap from time to time uh, based on variances in the body panels or if you've smacked something or or if the cut tolerance is just slightly off like i said before all these machines are a little different uh, sometimes all the cut lines won't line up perfectly it's just the nature of the beast the vinyl is actually quite thin and, and flexible and stretchable, but the over laminate layer, that thick layer that they put on top of it to give it its, its protective off-road um, qualities, that doesn't conform and stretch as well. And it also gives the, a lot of the thickness to the material. So you just have to accept that this isn't gonna be an automotive wrap where it like curves around all your curvy mirrors and, and your door handles. Um, it's not as malleable. That's why you'll see a lot more panels cut. You'll see relief cuts and, and you'll see certain sections not covered up because the vinyl just would not survive in those conditions, uh, especially not off-road. Well, the coverage on this wrap is nice. It's definitely better than the previous wrap for coverage so far. We'll see if um, there's pieces to fill in all these little spots. I'm hoping there is. Uh, I'm assuming there is. Wow, it's awesome. That's looking wicked. Oh yeah, sweet. Those few panels should have given you a good idea of, of what to expect. I'm gonna time lapse the rest of them here. I think one important thing to remember is, like with any product, you need to have realistic expectations out of what the end result and the performance will be. These wraps, like I mentioned, are, are not like an automotive style wrap. They have to put up with the elements, pressure washing, getting hit by branches and mud and debris and rubbed up against and rolled over. They're very, very tough and they offer a ton of protection, but you will not get the same type of coverage. They will not conform the same way as, as, as a wrap on an automotive on-road application. So keep that in mind. These wraps are meant to be viewed from 15, 20 feet away or in movement or, or covered in a light like haze of dirt or something like that, like they will be used in the real world. Um, so if you take a magnifying glass to any of these wraps, I, I don't care what company it is, who installed it, there will be little imperfections, there will be open spots, there will be areas that, that there's some gapping. 
but when you stand back 15, 20 feet and you look at the machine, the complete product, then it does all melt together into one big, beautiful piece of artwork, and that's how these need to be viewed. So now we're onto the biggest panel, the roof. I know a lot of people usually find the roofs daunting and, and a little freaky, but um, it's actually quite easy in my application because it's a thin, just flat sheet of aluminum. Now, if you're running a plastic roof, uh, like one of the sport roofs from uh, Can-Am or, or, or Polaris, then there'll be a lot more contours and edges and stuff like that. So those are sections where you're gonna have to do some relief cuts so that the, the wrap has some help conforming to, to all those edges and, and creases. Um, but just take your time. Um, you see me here. I start at one corner and then I kind of just I work my way into the groove and then I work my way out towards the outsides. You'll see me press my hand down the middle of the panel and then work my way to the edges. And that's just the best way to kind of work your air bubbles out and, and get all the air to flow through the air release vinyl. Um, and just take your time. If you have to peel it off a few times, go ahead and peel it off a few times and uh, eventually just, just focus on getting it lined up so that your edges overlap per properly. And most of the roof panels, regardless of who you get them from, will come with a little bit of overlap so that you can trim them to fit properly. You'll see me at the end running an X-Acto uh, blade uh, along the, uh, the, co the contours and the edges of the roof and, and then it gives it that beautiful nicely trimmed fit. If you're ordering a wrap and the roof is optional or it costs extra, I highly recommend you to get it. The roof really, really pulls the designs together. It really gives it that custom look. If you were to just leave the roof black or, or one color, um, it doesn't give you the same pop as, as carrying the vinyl into the roof. It's also a great place to put logos and, and slogans and, 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 and cool designs. Uh, you'll see me doing another wrap coming up in the, in the near future where I help Greg, Super Greg, install a custom wrap from Barrett on his machine and, and you'll see how wild that one turned out. So stay tuned for that video, it'll, it'll be on the channel in about a month or so. Um, the, the next series of videos uh, won't be shot videos, we'll be uploading our series of videos from our trip to Tennessee. You'll see this wrap put to the test, you'll see the roll cage put to the test. We're going to roll the machine actually, roll test the cage, uh, the wrap holds up great. And um, after that you're also going to see some videos from uh, a charity ride we did here locally and um, a, a bunch more awesome content related to this machine as well as the CF Moto, uh, the Z Force 950 will likely get a custom wrap as well and uh, a ton of upgrades and we've got a third unit coming to the channel which will also, um, you guys are going to love that one, it's, it's, it's one of the newer units and new body style uh, so I think you guys will have a lot of fun watching that build progress as well so we got a lot in store for you guys uh, you just see the time lapse now of the side panel, it's really fun to watch this come together um, the time lapse videos are, are really rewarding uh, when it comes to projects like this. And then uh, near the end, I'll give you some before and afters. We'll do a walk around of the finished product and you can really see how cool it looks. As I mentioned before, this wrap was printed by M7 Designs in Alberta, Canada. But if you order a wrap um, from Barrett, he ships internationally and he's got partnerships with more than one printing house. So uh, if you order a wrap in the United States, it will be printed in the States. Uh, if you order a wrap in Canada, it's printed in Canada. That helps with shipping and duties and all sorts of other logistical issues. One more little installation tip is that once you um, get the wrap mostly positioned and it's all in place, then you're going to want to grab a heat gun and you're going to want to go around all the, the contours, all the big dips, all the big creases, and you're going to want to hit them with some heat. You, you want to be careful though because the two different layers, like the clear over laminate layer, the protective layer and the vinyl layer underneath react slightly differently to heat. They're different materials. So um, you don't want to overheat the panels because what will happen is uh, the wrap underneath can shrink a little bit and shrivel or you can bubble up the over laminate layer. So just slowly heat them up and then that'll get the adhesive nice and hot and it'll also help the wrap stretch a little bit and once it cools it kind of maintains a memory to um, the position it's in and that way it won't try and lift out of these corners and off all the big edges. Um, so you're seeing here um, it's starting to come together. Uh, it's looking sharp. It's a completely different machine especially when you compare it to this blank canvas on this side. So um, almost done. We're gonna slap this side on now and then like I said 
definitely want to go around, rub down all the panels after, use a microfiber, apply pressure to all the panels, uh, pay special attention to all the, the big bends and the contours and the edges. If there's overhang on the edges, make sure you trim it all. Uh, make sure it's got, you know, the edges aren't hanging out because you don't want debris under there. Um, hit that stuff all with some heat, uh, maybe even two or three times if you have to, because you're really going to notice a difference in the life cycle about how well you apply it. If, if you give it some extra love now, it will hold together better. You won't have any issues with peeling or lifting, which realistically you shouldn't have because once you feel how sticky and tacky this adhesive is, uh, it's no surprise this stuff doesn't come off. There's no issues with pressure washing it. You don't really have to worry about corners. It will not lift and blow away on you like um, like certain decals or stickers you probably put on the windshield of your car or something like that. This, this adhesive and this vinyl is on a different level. This is some really quality stuff. I really hope you guys have found this video informative. I hope if you are considering a wrap install, this helps you out along the way and it prevents you from making some basic beginner mistakes or at least lets you know what to expect. Um, if you have any questions, then you know if, if you're working with Barry, you can always reach out to him. He does send a little bit of an information package with the wraps, but I think this video should it should help you install a wrap on any vehicle you need to. Oh yeah, she's done guys. She's finally done. Not 100%, we still need to get the light bar on, the reverse lights, the whips, some final details, but she's ready for her maiden voyage. Battle Wagon version 3.0 with the brand new Mac Chrome wrap. Look at that thing. So there you have it guys, all done. It's sitting here in, in Tennessee, ready for its maiden voyage. Never gonna be this clean again, like I said. So there'll be a few more pictures in a minute of the wrap all completed and, and outside in the snow for the first time. Uh, when I installed this wrap, it was still snowy in Canada where we are. Um, so it looked just super awesome in the natural light like you're about to see. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful and informative, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. And if you enjoy the content, then share it with your friends on social media. If you'd like to help support the channel, the best way to do so is through our Shopify store. There'll be a link in the description as well as at the bottom of the video here. So head on over there. We got some cool stickers. We got sweaters, shirts, all sorts of cool stuff. We got hats coming soon too and a bunch more cool swag designs. Um, so just remember, all the proceeds generated there go right back into creating more content for you guys to enjoy. If you're looking for a badass wrap for your machine, then make sure you hit up Barrett Hepburn Design. And like always guys, ride safe out there. See you in the next video.